Hello guys, welcome to another episode of, Learn the TOEFL the easy way with, Teacher Fish. So in today's video, we will discuss about the first task of the TOEFL speaking section known as the independent task. Okay, when responding to an independent speaking task, you are required to use your own ideas, opinions, or experiences. The task asks you to make a choice between two options and to defend that choice. You could be asked to give a personal opinion between two options and support your opinion, take a position about some issue and defend that position, or make and support a recommendation. After listening to and reading the prompt, you must immediately choose the option that seems easier to defend and organize details that would support that choice. Then you should give your response in a clear and organized manner. As what I always tell my students, there are two main types of independent speaking tasks. The first is what we call a preference question. The other is what we call, opinion-based question. Now, the reason we classify the types of questions is because we use different expressions or sentences depending on the type of question we are answering. Now let us talk about some important things to remember every time you are engaged with an independent speaking task. Let's start with how you are scored on this task. To give you an overview, your score or rating depends on three variables, language use, content, and delivery. Language use mainly involves grammar and vocabulary. Content, on the other hand, focuses on how you develop your ideas. As for delivery, it is mainly concerned with the manner you speak your response. Is the response clear and fluid? Both fall under delivery. Next is the two time limits for the task. First, the amount of time that you are allowed to prepare your response is only 15 seconds. That is why I said earlier that you should immediately choose your option. Anyway, later in the discussion, I will share with you the note-taking method we use in class. The other time limit is the response time. You are only allowed to speak for 45 seconds. Moving forward, let us now discuss what your response should include in order to score perfectly on independent speaking task. Firstly, you have to directly address the prompt. The direct answer to the question will serve as your thesis statement. And as what you might already know, the thesis statement is if not the most important, very very important because it is the sentence that gives direction to a response. Anyway, let us learn how we compose our direct answer statement. Remember earlier in the discussion, I mentioned that we have two main types of independent questions. This is where they are most useful. If you are answering a preference question, for example the prompt says, do you prefer to wear school uniform in school or any clothing that you choose to wear? Then it would be best if you directly answer it like this. I would prefer to wear clothing I chose rather than school uniform. Nevertheless, if the question requires for your opinion and asks, should students wear school uniforms when in school? Then it would again be best if you start your response with a sentence like, in my opinion, it would be better if students are allowed to wear any clothing they choose when in school. Remember that you are only allowed to speak for 45 seconds. So a sentence that addresses the question directly is your best friend. Not only will it save you time and allow you to spend it with the other parts of your response, but it will also allow your listener to have a better understanding of your choice. The next component of your response is your first reason. At the start of the video, Remember I mentioned that the independent task asks you to make a choice between two options and to defend that choice. This is it. Your first reason is your first defense. Also, isn't it that one of the variables of your score is language? So in this part of your response, start showcasing your use of different sentence structures. What I mean is, when giving a reason, use a simple sentence. Actually, using a simple sentence when giving a reason has two benefits. One is sentence variation, the other is it facilitates easier understanding. Now, when composing your reason statement, always make it a point to include two things. The topic and the reason or the controlling idea. Also, do not forget to use expressions that would help your listener understand that you are giving a reason. You may use transition words like, first, to begin with, or other similar transitions. You may also use expressions like, one reason is, or, the first reason is. Let's have an example. You can say, one reason students should be allowed to wear whatever they choose to school is that it develops creativity. Notice that the sentence has an expression that lets the listener know that I am giving my first reason. 
It also includes my choice which is the topic of my response. Lastly, develops creativity, is the reason for my choice. The next part of your response is to give an example to further illustrate your reason, or, to explain why you gave such reason. Now still having language use in mind, this is the part where you can use your sentence composition expertise. Make use of compound, complex, or other more advanced sentences. But, be sure that the sentence or sentences that you compose will support or match the reason you gave because if not, then you are compromising the content which is again a variable of your score. For instance, having in mind creativity as the reason for your choice, you can say, mixing and matching the clothes to wear every day gradually teaches a student to become imaginative which later on may be useful, especially when he wants to pursue a career in the field of arts or in writing. Next, you again have to give a reason. If you'd read an independent speaking question in full, you will notice that the last sentence of the prompt always tells you to include reasons, with an S, and details, again with an S. Now, in giving your second reason, follow the things we talked about when you gave your first. You may still use simple sentence for it. Anyway, in such a short response, using two types of sentence structures would be enough. Also, do not forget your transition or expression that would signal your listener that you are now giving your second reason. And so, let us again have an example. Another reason wearing whatever a student wants in school is better is because it is cheaper. If you are guessing that the next element of your response is an explanation or an example, then you got it. But, do not forget your sentence variation. Again, let us look at this example. School uniforms usually include a white collared button down shirt that you can almost see through the inside, so there is also a need of an undershirt. Then, it must be matched with a pair of pants and black leather shoes. So buying these things in the end would even be more expensive than just wearing a shirt, jeans and sneakers that the student may already have. So these are the elements you need for an independent speaking response. However, I usually teach my students an optional sentence that they can add to their responses to make them even better. It is a summary or a closing sentence. The TOEFL does not require this but it might be a good way to earn a positive impression from the TOEFL raters. I mean, they might think of you as someone who can flexibly use the English language. And so, why not give it a try? Who knows, you might even earn a few extra credits for it. But, I have a rule in using a closing statement. Use it only when there is still at least 10 seconds remaining on your time after speaking your last detail for the second reason. 10 seconds would be enough to execute a closing sentence in a rather relaxed way. The optional closing sentence must contain an expression that indicates a closure, a summary of reasons, and a restatement of your first sentence. Remember to restate and not simply copy your first sentence because the raters might think you have limited vocabulary. Anyway, it can be as simple as, therefore, these are the reasons I think wearing any fashion in school is more favored by students over school uniforms. Now that we've already learned how a response should be composed, let us focus on the first time limit which is the preparation time that you will encounter with the task. Let me ask you, do you think 15 seconds is enough for you to come up with an independent task response or do you wish that it was longer? Of course, most of us if not all would prefer it to be the latter. However, the 15 second limit is all we've got. So, here is what you can do to keep up with such short preparation time. Use a note-taking method called, keyword prep. Keep in mind the five elements of your response, direct answer, reason one, support one, reason two, and support two. On your paper, write on each of these fields. So your paper must look like this. By doing so, there is a huge chance of being able to prepare for your response. And oh, do not worry about the closing statement. Remember that it is optional so it should not be part of your preparation. Here is a bonus tip for you guys. Did you know that you can increase your preparation time even by just a few seconds? Here is how. On the actual test, when the question appears on the screen, it will be read for you by a speaker. Next, after the speaker finishes reading the prompt, another speaker will tell you to begin to prepare after a beep sound. This whole process takes time. Keep in mind that it is not a rule in the TOEFL speaking that you have to wait for the beep before you begin your preparation. What you can do is, once you see the question on the screen, read it fast, faster than the speaker's pace. But, be sure that you understand it. 
focus only on the question. Usually, the question or prompt includes a final sentence that tells you to include reasons and details in your response. Ignore the last sentence of the prompt. Anyway it is almost always the same instruction, and besides a speaker will read it for you so you'd still have a grasp of it. Next, you also do not need to wait for the preparation signal from the other speaker. By doing these, you are able to snatch a few seconds from the task and have a head start with your preparation. Even with just a few seconds earned from the process, when added to your 15 second limit would count a lot. Before we end this video, let us first review the parts of an independent task response. Starting with, the direct answer statement or thesis statement. Next is your first reason. Followed by a detail, either an explanation or an example that would further expound or illustrate the reason. Then comes your second reason. The second reason again must be supported by an explanation or an example. Finally, the closing statement. If you still have at least 10 seconds on your response time. Remember also to vary your sentences. Lastly, remember the key to earning a perfect score in terms of delivery is to practice. So this is the end of our lesson about speaking task 1. I hope that after watching the video, you now find it easier to answer the independent speaking task of the TOEFL. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them on the comment section and I will do my best to respond to them promptly. I have also uploaded other TOEFL lesson videos and TOEFL exercises so check out my channel. Please do not forget to subscribe, press like, and hit the notification bell so that you'd get informed every time I upload a new video or practice exercises. And always remember, the TOEFL is not difficult, if you know what to do. With that, see you again on the next episode of Learn the TOEFL the Easy Way with Teacher Fish.